What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles. Welcome you to another edition of Lyles Figure Files. It feels like I'm always talking about G.I. Joe or Marvel Legends, but that's because there's so much exciting stuff coming from both of these brands. Today, I'm talking about my favorite line, G.I. Joe Classified Series. And seriously, all the news we get dropped on a weekly basis now is just getting me more and more hyped up for next year. It's It's been a great year in terms of collecting G.I. Joe Classified Series figures, even a little a few vehicles, but it seems like next year is going to be even crazier. I'm working now. It's December 2nd, so it's time to start working on my top 10 list, and G.I. Joe is going to be a hard one. I already know that. Marvel Legends is probably going to be right along that same kind of vein of like, this is going to be tough. I think Star Wars Black Series has enough for a good, solid top 10 that I'm happy with as well. And I know some of you all have started sending me your suggestions. Keep sending those along in the comments because I don't want to forget anything and be like, oh, man, how in the world did I not include that figure? So I have a few that I definitely need to open a review right now on the review docket later on today i'm finally going to open up my torpedo we got him started but man every time i'm opening up one of these it's like this is why i'm into the classified series line this much because every figure is just like oh my gosh it's the greatest figure of this character that i'm gonna have in my collection and in mezco 112 and their judge line is getting me a little bit more intrigued now but for the price point, you can't be classified series line, and they keep bringing more figures to the lineup. I'm redesigning the figure room to accommodate classified series. Started to move some of the army builders into a little place on the shelf. Pretty happy with it. I need to record it before I do this major transformation, but let's talk about all the news that's come just lately with G.I. Joe, and it's been a lot. It's been a lot of stuff that has me excited as we head into 2024. So on the last live, I talked about this. This is the box, men on card, if you will, versions of the 60th anniversary action soldier infantry version. So he looks really cool. He's got a lot of detail, as you would expect from this line. And this mod deuce is going to my roadblock ASAP. Whenever I get this figure, I'm not quite sure how fast, but he's going there. I think this is an M50, M60, and I believe in the Jai Joe comic book, Sergeant Slaughter rocked that a little bit, so I'm probably going to hand that off to him. And see, this is just fun. I like this. Maybe these are going to be some troops, some other branches of the military in these different corners of the world that the Joes go to and encounter and help out as they do their thing. I don't need a lot of grunts. I only need one grunt in my G.I. Joe collection. And then we also took, the, took a look at Big Boa. He looks really good. They're getting really close to knocking out all of these 1987 villains. We got, we already got Croc Master. We got Big Boa. Raptor's been announced. It's time. It's time. Look into my eyes. We need to get Crystal Ball coming real soon. So that's pretty fun. That was a wacky group of Cobra villains, but I really liked them. I thought they filled in some interesting gaps in the Cobra roster in terms of what their specialties were. So really fun to see them coming along. Now we got some exciting reveals, some men on card looks at some other figures. We saw at PulseCon 2023, this version, this retro version of Duke. And this is spectacular. I mean, I think when this guy drops, he is going to be really hard to dethrone is my figure 2024 at least from what i've seen and what i know is coming so far the only one might be the one i'm going to show after but this figure looks great i mean we saw the the backpack with a judge shovel in case he gets lost somewhere his binoculars he's got the trademark machine gun the figure had the, the old 3.75 inch one had he's got the sheath right here right by his ankle that's really nice to see he can pull it out in any circumstance any situation and even though it comes with this and i may have him rocking this a lot of the time to me the smaller pistols were duke's actions at because this is where what he was using when he and roadblock with that mod deuce took out the cobra rattler in gi joe issue 22 so <laughs> gotta grab that and that's probably gonna be the main weapon i have with them but for you old school cartoon lovers you get a cartoon gun and that's pretty fun to add in to the mix as well and then duke also has his helmet so that was the render version that we saw back at PulseCon. and today we got to look at the actual package version of duke courtesy of simon riley so definitely want to shout him out but here's what we got and you know what i love about the renders for gi joe classified series we're not seeing some totally bizarre take like 
what happened? I think maybe the only exception to that is CoverGirl, and I'm still trying to figure out what happened to her. Just a nightmare looking figure. But anyway, this looks good. And I'm checking his helmet because I'm seeing this, and this does not look like what I care about with Duke, but for another G.I. Joe. And I will be stunned and shocked if we don't see this reused with Flash and then maybe Colonel Hawk. And then, of course, Short Fuse or lots of Joes that will be rocking this style helmet. So nice to see they're already working this into rotation. I'm curious with Flash and Short Fuse in particular, if they're going to use this exact helmet because this is more of the retro style, or if they're going to go with more of that modern helmet that they've used with rock and roll with grunt and roadblock because that's what they've been going with just to keep it consistent with the style but i'm not gonna be upset either way but i really like this dude i mean the head sculpt looks like that render and everything else looks intact and just a really nice looking figure let's take a look we got the circle belt that's key i mean you know just these little elements that make those retro figures retro true renditions of the 3.75 inch figure i guess i'm trying to find the binoculars i don't see them hanging in this window and yeah i'm just not seeing this weird i i, I saw everything else I mean, oh here they go they're right hiding behind like the, the fist and the knife and it's odd because you can't quite see it in this one but there that's where they appear to be and that looks to be his stand as well so we're getting, we're getting swappable hands. I know that was definitely something a lot of people wanted to see out of more figures in the line. So Duke's got him. He's got fists and he's got clutching hands so he can hold his weapons. That's really cool. If you want to throw everything on him, I love this backpack. I think this is the exact same one that came with the original Series 1 Duke, just with better colors, more classic looks to him. So that's a really cool. I am looking forward to having classic retro style duke in the collection and then we've got scarlet coming and you know this figure just blew me away i mean the fact that you can take the ponytail off and then you can go super super original gi joe collector where scarlet did not have a ponytail she was just rocking her regular short hair and the ability to take that off is just such a nice touch nice little bonus for people who were getting this line right when it started she comes with an m16 and i was able to take my grunt m16 through the bath, the hot water bath, got it fixed. This sucker was like all kinds of cockeyed. So I was really happy about that. Hopefully we won't have those same issues with Scarlet's, but she's also has swappable hands. She's got swappable fish, you see here. And she's got the knife that plugs into, where does this plug into Scarlet? That's weird. Um, Jeez, that was funny. I thought I saw where it went earlier. Anyway, so she's got the, the knife for wherever it's gonna go on her. And this pistol, of course, goes into her sidearm. And it looks like this is where her quiver is gonna be. So you're gonna throw her arrows right in here. That's kind of fun. So she can grab them really quickly, plug them into the crossbow, and just throw those bolts into action, take out Destro and his ship. You're a paradox, Scarlet. So that's gonna be really fun. And I'm so excited to see that this figure actually looks just as good as this render. And Again, these are Simon Riley's pictures, and here's everything. Scarlet's head sculpt looks like it survived intact. No wacky cover girl foolishness here. She looks really good, and I'm, I'm really excited about Scarlet. Double jointed elbows. She doesn't look thin, waif like like that original Scarlet. So this is a major improvement on that original figure. And you know, again, I'm not gonna knock them because they were trying to do new stuff and see what worked and what didn't as they brought this new iteration of G.I. Joe out to us, but really right here is what we wanted from this line. And I'm just, or at least this is what I wanted to think a lot of you all. And gosh, this is so exciting. And it's interesting because it looks like they're different ponytails from what I'm seeing here. So we've got this one that looks like it's just trailing back. And then this looks like more of an action one. So the fact that they've thrown in two different ways she can have her ponytails is just wild to me. So that's really an interesting touch because I did not see that before earlier. So very cool there. She's got all her gear and she's going to go to work. And I can't wait to put her with the retro snake eyes, stalker, you know, breaker. I wish they'd go a little bit more retro with him. And I would really love it if they included an alternate head sculpt 
with a swappable piece of gum that you can put out just like they did with the Marvel Legends Jubilee so he can blow his bubbles comic book style add a little crew cut no beard I need a clean shaven breaker because that's the one that I think of when I think of breaker but this Scarlet this Duke phenomenal figures just really really great stuff here and just shows what the classified series team does better than anybody else they're the best at what they do then we've got this render of airborne and another figure i was very excited about it was definitely one i was hoping to see with this dragonfly as one of the tier figures they said listen don't worry about him he's coming and coming is actually a lot sooner than this dragonfly but this figure looks like he could also be one of those gi joe or just take out G.I. Joe and say straight up figure of the year. All that gear looks amazing on him. And we've got the, the dual goggle action going. He's got that classic helmet that they've been using for all of the original Joes. So he's got his knife that plugs right in there. He's got a really cool machine gun, a small handgun, puts it in here. And then he's going to work. Now, the only thing that would make this figure better if it came with a workable parachute. But I don't think that works in the budget, at least for a normal default figure. And so more pictures from Simon, and here you go. There's Airborne, and he looks really cool, and I cannot wait to get this dude. There's so many figures on this line, and I'm like, I can't wait to get this one. I can't wait to get that one. But it's true. I'm just like, more G.I. Joes. I'm going to buy pretty much every original character, everything you guys want to roll out. I'm bringing and I'm buying because this line is just hitting in a way that no other one is doing for me at this time. And you see the 60th anniversary action show action soldier recon diver so this is basically a reuse of our guy torpedo but he's got a lot more gear a ton of a lot more gear so maybe you can cobble some of these pieces throw them on to torpedo if you want i'm looking at this smaller handgun with a sniper i think or the scope i think that would work really well for torpedo if you wanted to to dish the more colorful flippers there's black options here and then same with this headgear the the diver gauge reader mask and the rebreather and all that good stuff excuse me so i'm really excited about this he also has the satchel of explosives that the retro snake eyes has and that makes a lot of sense for seal to have that as well so at least for these figures i'm buying don't need a second metal head but we've already seen the render of him and we've seen the package image, so you got to assume this is coming much sooner. So on the list of characters that have been announced, we've seen renders for who's left. Glad you asked. Quick Kick's coming. And this figure looks amazing. And I really think, I'm looking properly correctly, yeah, it does. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. So those those throwing stars, those shuriken, shurikens, they come out of these slots of his sash here. And that's gonna be really cool to put that sucker in action, have him throwing them all around at, at Storm Shadow. It looks like they put a little bit of a design here that I didn't notice earlier. I don't really care about that. Maybe I'll just paint it black, but it's kind of a neat touch with it. And I'm so glad that they just went classic style with him. They didn't try to modernize him. Just, just this is what a quick kick looks like. This is what we get. Karate chopping hands, fist. And he's got some hands that grab the swords of the nunchucks. Awesome. The frozen fudgy. The throwing star with the throwing action. And the backpack. And the swappable head. I mean, this dude has a bunch of stuff. And I know I said Duke. And I said Scarlet. And I said Airborne. But man, maybe Quick Kick's going to be one of my figures of the year, too. I got to imagine he's going to be in the top 10. Just because he looks so cool and so amazing. And they did a great job with him. Then we've got... Uh, retro Rakondo. He's got that great mustache. I love his expression. It just seems so fitting for him. He's got sleeves rolled up a little bit higher. I hope that they use those for Flint when we get around to a retro that has to be coming at this point. And his backpack looks great. He's got a machete. He's got a handgun. And he's got that really great old school rifle, machine gun, whichever way that is. I'm not a gun aficionado, but that looks great. Cannot wait to see Rikondo and see what he looks like in, in package form as well. Then we got the Techno Viper, and he's got a lot of great gear. You see this plugs into his backpack, into his gun here. So, and then he's got a smaller one. I love the colors of this Viper, and I just think this one's a cool one. I don't think I need to army build this as much as I do some of the others. I, I would love to stumble onto some of these $15 Ross packs of Vipers, but 
maybe two at most three of these guys, but I just love the colors and I think they'll work out really nice paired up with the tech with the televiper. And then finally, you know, because you know there were some teases uh, here as always in the drop zone of my affiliate Entertainment Earth. If you happen to go use anything, buy anything from them, feel free to use my affiliate code. That's L Y L E S M F, and there you go. But next Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, happy anniversary. But who is having an anniversary? Is it me? Shoot, I better set up a reminder to find out, not start a fight or anything. So just as a reminder, we did have some figures that uh, had that, that anniversary. It's the Ashen Soldiers. So we've got the Recon Diver, and then we've also got the Ashen Soldier Infantry. So I assume we're going to see both pre-orders for these guys going up next Thursday. So I'll make sure to put up a reminder, put the links in case you want to use them for me. But those figures are pretty cool to see them added on. And then just because I'm curious what else is coming up on the horizon, uh, we got another pre-order for more Marvel stuff, Mar Marvel, more Hasbro stuff on the 13th. This pack is going to rock it. Be sure to sign up for a reminder for this figure so you won't have to hire someone to track it down for you later. Who would that be? I'm wondering if that's a Marvel character. I know Dan, you treat tweeted out that there's going to be some Marvel stuff coming out this month. He said they were taking a break in November, but maybe this is more Marvel stuff. But of course, on December 15th, we for sure have Marvel stuff coming. You'll marvel at these new figures if you sign up for a reminder. Suit up and get ready to get ready for an out-of-this-world launch, or maybe just a fancy night out. Who knows? You'll need to sign up and find out. I'm assuming we're going to see a whole new wave of Marvel Legends, and that's going to be the pre-order for them. So exciting stuff there. And then we're not going to have any more until January 4th. And I definitely don't know what this one is. When they sing, you can't hear. There's no air. Sometimes I think I kind of like that. And other times I think I'm already there. Now, those are interesting clues. I don't know at all what that one could be. But oh, hopefully we'll get some more news soon. Now, that was not the only bit of G.I. Joe news. There was more and some exciting stuff. Um, shout out to my guy, Ski Raider, for putting me on to this It's Chad video, where It's Chad breaks down the very high rumors that the Snowcat Yes, and the Thunder Machine, yes, are coming next year. And they're even coming for under $200, around the $150, $200 price point. But they're not going to be HasLab projects. That's really exciting so much because when they opened up and they brought us the vamp and they were like, this is not a HasLab, so don't worry. We're not doing it like that anymore. We're opening up a whole new SKU effectively where – figures and vehicles that make sense that don't have as much intricate parts as some of these other things we can get those out to you through this mechanism where you're not paying a whole rack of money but you can still get this thing and i want to pull out the picture put up the picture of the vamp just to give you an idea of what i'm talking about here so here's a vamp and you i'm just kind of figuring like all right this was was a very Civil 150, I think that's what it was. I'm blanking on how much it costs because the price in this one did not matter. It was like, sign me up. I'm here. Get me the vamp. I'm good. The price is a non factor for me. Oh, right, 150. It's actually $100. That That's crazy. I forgot it was that cheap. That cheap. Back in the day, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been this cheap, but $100 for something like this is great. And that effectively just means the vamp is $75 because clutch is also included. So we've got that. And I'm just envisioning how much bigger than the vamp does the snow cat really need to be. And I'm thinking maybe you could spread out the, the Cassie a little bit. Chas <laughs> Try to use a word and I'm not even sure I'm using it the right way. Anyway, the whole canopy section, the top part of the snow cat, I don't think it needs to be so much bigger than the vamp. I think that's something that could work without needing a lot of space. And since I'm unsure, let's do what I always do when I'm trying to find some Joe parts and pieces and find out how they match up. That means, of course, I'm going to go to my friends over at 3djoes.com and pull it out here and just see, hey, what's going on? What are we thinking with the size of the snowcat? And would that actually work properly as something that we can throw in here? 
So let's go back to the 85 lineup. There we go. Let's pull it out. Let's see exactly how big the snow cap really has to be and how this works. So clearly you see the size of this thing. And I don't think that's too wild. I mean, you see the size of it and Alpine is hanging on the back. He's really not that tall. Him and Snow Job couldn't see him with snow. It's not because he was John Cena. But that's not too bad from the vamp. And I don't think, you know, I don't need the treads to move. Just put a couple wheels under there, underneath. I'm fine. This is basically the front part of the vamp. And then we replace that back in with some treads. So they'll, they'll definitely have to sculpt some more. But I think if they were to use the under carriage section of the vamp they could do a lot of these vehicles at this size and a lot of the snowcat of course is the missiles the ski torpedoes they've got going on here we just need a space big enough for frostbite and snake eyes if you want to throw them in there but this is exciting and, and the fact that they're going to go this far and do more vehicles like this and this scale without needing to go the half that route i'd pay 150 dollars for a snowcat and a thunder machine sign me up I, let's make that happen. I'm really excited. The fact that they're going to go, hey, we don't need to do this big crowd fundraiser. We believe that you all are rabid fans of this G.I. Joe brand. And you'll support whatever we throw out as long as it's done well. And we know they're going to do that. And then over on Instagram, T1 Toy mentioned that Road Pig, Heart Wrencher, another Dreadnought, somebody I did not know about at the last live I've sent, since done a little research. She should look pretty cool if they do her how she looks based on her combo appearance. Starduster and Nemesis Enforcer are going to be coming, as well as an Iron Grenadier bat. So those could be some really fun looking figures. Surprisingly, no real Joe outside of Starduster mentioned in this set. But I'm always about the I'm always of the opinion that the more Joes we get, the the more Cobras that we get, the better because the Joes need to be outnumbered. I need like a five or even ten to one. Cobra army builder to every one Joe because I want my Joes to look up and go, man, there's a lot of Joe, a lot of Cobras out here for us to stop. Let's get to work on these snakes. So that's exciting to me. Getting more dreadnoughts and you know, we've seen some work done on Torch. We've got Ripper, need to get Buzzer, but fleshing out the dreadnought ranks is exciting. I'm hoping we get some more news on monkey wrench soon because we don't need to keep cutting the line and messing things up. We've got Zartan, we've got Zarana, we've got Buzzer, we've got Ripper, Torch is coming, and, and those are the ones we've seen or know a little bit about. But we're going to get Thrasher real soon. Rogue Pig definitely needs to be in that mix. Naga Hyde is coming apparently based on some package art and some more teases, but let's not forget about my man Monkey Rich because he loves his explosions and he's absolutely perfect as a mayhem chaos agent of the Dreadnoughts. So anyway, so much cool stuff coming down the pipe for G.I. Joe. And one, one last thing before I wrap this one up. Now, I'm not quite sure how this is going to play out, if there's going to be something that we could actually make use of, but as usual, I took a look at Target's preview ad for next week, which... You know, that for them starts tomorrow. So these are the sales valid from December 3rd through December 9th. There's a BOGO buy one, get one free on mix and match toys. I'm not sure that's just going to be what we see down here, the LOL, Paw Patrol, Jurassic Park, Baby Live, Play-Doh, et cetera. Or they're going to throw in some actual useful figures. One thing for sure that they did include, not GI Joes, but Transformers. So we'll see some 20% off all Transformer toys. So there's some some Autobots, some Decepticons you've been looking for. Now will be your time to pick up and take advantage of them. So a lot of stuff that's coming as usual. And the way things are going, we know we're going to get some Marvel Legends news, apparently, and hopefully some more G.I. Joes. And with a package shot of Duke Scarlet and Airborne, Big Bow and Metalhead, and we've also seen the package shot of Mutt and Junkyard, maybe... Just maybe we'll see a few more Joes creeping out to us before we ring in 2024. For now, that's it. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. This episode of Lyle's Figure Files has been filed.